Welcome back to the Black Jersey. It's your boy Max hosting the channel, and I've got a great video to come about the Chiefs, who are the team I support in Super Rugby, Aotearoa, which is finally now over. The big fella I've got next to me is a prop for the Chiefs, and I'd like very much for him to introduce himself. Take it away. Today, um, Ollie Norris, one of the um, props for the Chiefs, Chiefs number 321, which is a great, great little number. And yeah, rocky season this year, so nah, pretty pumped for the season so far, and Looking forward to Trans Tasman coming up. Yeah, good stuff, mate. I thought I'd get Ollie onto um, the old YouTube channel because I thought it would be real cool for you guys to hear the perspective of a rookie professional athlete just starting off his rugby career. And I kind of thought it would be awesome to you know hear what Ollie's take would be on the massive improvement our team's made over the last season. And I'm just so happy with how we went, even if we didn't win the final. So I'm going to ask um, Ollie a bit of a bit of a questionnaire. Not a formal interview, I'll be a bit laid back, but I'll start by asking Ollie um, when did he start playing rugby so we can all kind of know um, the journey he took to be a professional player. Take it away, mate. <clears throat> yeah, so I was um, four years old when I started playing rugby. So you have to be five years old, but I was quite a big kid and my brother was just a year older than me. So I kind of, kind of shunted him just so I could... I'd always played in the same team as him when I was a kid just so it was easier for mum to... Just travelled one game, so I actually started a year early. I was four, back in two thousand and four. Yeah, there's no harm in that, eh? Yeah. Like when you've got a brother who's um, playing, you might as well just join in with them because it's always good to start early and jump in with the big boys, so you can, you know, yeah. put on that beef a bit. Well, eh? Because now I'm one of the smallest in super, so it's bloody. <laughs> it helped me back then being the smallest, and <laughs> when I was five, four years old. Yeah, exactly, man. Because um, a lot of the props going around nowadays are pretty heavy and so it's been real useful um that past experience obviously for ollie because he's definitely holding his weight this season and i think he's been playing um pretty well so the second question i have for ollie is um what school did he play for so i was actually at um st peter's cambridge uh boarding school out in cambridge i was there from year nine to year 13 and i lived at school as well at the boarding school so i was 13 years old shoveled off to boarding school i was actually um little add-on for my brother as well, just because oh, yeah. a year older, and they wanted him on scholarship, and he he was pretty mean at rugby, and I was, wasn't was that great back then, so they said, we'll send him on scholarship only if you take the other one as well. Jeez. So I was, so I was a little add-on, and things kind of worked out from there. Had awesome coaches, awesome players there, and ended up doing quite well at school. Oh, it's definitely worked out for Oli um, long-term, hasn't it? Um, his brother Jacob, oh, just to let you sure. know, um, plays for Tasman in case um, anyone watching wasn't aware. So, Ollie, growing up, man, um, what position did you think you were going to play? And um, kind of when did you make up your mind that prop was going to be your go-to, bro? So, from when I was about four to about 18, I was a number eight, oh, yeah. slash lock. And then got the hard got the hard word when I was 18 leaving school that, I probably wouldn't make it anywhere at number eight. And uh, thanks to Kent Curry and Craig Stevenson out of Howtap, I um, moved on to play prop. And yeah, so as soon as, that, as soon as I started playing prop at 18, I was kind of stuck there. So it's been a good, good three and a bit years. Yeah, and good, man. A lot of learnings and a lot of sore backs. But yeah, no, I'm pretty happy there at the moment. Yeah, prop's um, not the most fun position to play, but it's definitely working out for this young fella because... At only 21 years old, he's playing pretty pretty darn well, and if he keeps it up, he's probably going to be an all-black. So it's definitely worked out for this guy um, in the long term, yeah. and after only three years, look how far he's gone. I got gone. a license to eat whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> always helps have a bit of beef, yep. eh, bro? So, um, so I'm always gonna, done, uh, mate, an extra 20 kilos in three years. Put on an extra 20 kgs, mate. Yeah. Far I think it pushed around even more. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So the next question I've got to um, ask Ollie is, so when during your Waikato years uh, did the Chiefs first approach you and ask if you wanted to play for them? So um, it would have been 2019. I um, Yeah, 2019. I was a replacement just for Waikato and then Aidan Johnson and Toby Smith both got injured. So I was called up as just a replacement, injury yeah. replacement, and then played two, my first two or three games off the bench and then that yep. fourth game against Counties um, managed to start and play right and then the Blues actually contacted me first. Oh, far out, wow. And, yeah, 
and then I had a I got a good relation with um Kent Curry through the um, Chiefs 16s and 18s years, and so I texted him and said, "Hey, mate, just being in contact by these guys." And then two hours later, I got a call from the Chiefs coach with an offer as well. So I was pretty lucky with that. Pretty lucky they wanted me. Yeah, that's what I like shows. to see because I don't want to see those Blues robbing any more of our boys. Like they've taken Nepo. They've taken a few of the other boys. They've taken Jacob Rutabata, Fuki Nipkins. They've tried to steal mm. a few others. They've taken Sam Dara from Canterbury. This man here, this is a patriot. He loves the Waikato. So you yeah, debuted for Waikato. Hating, um, the Blues, mate, I couldn't believe. So you debuted for Waikato um, as a 19-year-old, mate. Then um, mm. only a few games into your, into your kind of career, the Blues are like, hey, man, we want you. Yeah, so it was quite a... Um... Quite mind blowing to me, to be fair, because I didn't think I was anywhere close. Not being signed with Waikato at the time, so I was, I was pretty done happy. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. Um, so okay, the next question I've got for Ollie is uh, so the fifth question, it's uh, how did you feel about being in the team when you first joined? And I also want to ask you, kind of, um, to integrate it with the same question, kind of, who showed you the ropes of being a member of the Chiefs kind of wider training squad? Um, so I was lucky I did the um, ITC program with Chiefs before my 20s year. And so I kind of had 10 weeks just to train with the Chiefs and get to know a few of the boys yeah. and all that. And then that following season when I was in for the – as a replacement player, I was – it's nerve-wracking. It's, it's not all easy using being a young prop going yeah, against the likes of Nepal and Angus Tarabao, Atu Moli. So, there. Yeah. No, but just adding on to those three, actually – the ones that kind of showed me the ropes and guys like Nate Harris, the older boys, they're, they're good to have around, eh? And then you've got all your All Blacks that are always just, they're real nice guys and just helping you out, eh? It's a real welcoming environment, the Chiefs, so it's it's lovely. It's awesome to be a part of it. Yeah, it's awesome to hear, mate. And, um, you know, team culture is probably one of the more important things. Like, I've talked about the impact it can have in previous videos and, um, you see, this is another great example of team culture working. Like, this guy's developing so quickly because he's had um, these older boys to help him out. So, it was like Nepo Laulala, Angus Ta'aval, uh, Nate Harris, um, Atu Molly, all those cons of um, established All Blacks that were showing you the ropes and stuff. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Team culture is massive, though. If you're all mates, you're all going to die for each other, to be fair, in the jersey. Exactly, mate. Yeah, that's awesome here. So, I think I'll move on then. So... Obviously, Ollie then went on to debut for the Chiefs in 2020, and oh, that was so disappointing for me that season. And thank goodness that's not happening anymore. So I wanted to ask Ollie what the toughest thing about was. Sorry, um, the toughest thing about the 2020 season kind of was for him, and um, kind of how it shaped his career that 2020 season. I think um the toughest part about it was for a lot of the games we lost, we were right in it. Like, we weren't yeah. losing by a lot. We were right in there and just bounce of the ball or a couple of kicks here and there were, um, was the end of, um, end of the game pretty much for us. And so it was, it's always tough turning up to training and you haven't won 11 games in a row. But, yeah. like, it's, yeah, it is tough, but you've just got to stay in it, eh? And I think also, as you see, the, um, the crowd kind of shrunk when we started losing. So it's, mm. you're losing a bit of respect in the community. Yeah. When that was happening, it's kind of it's to really be expected. Thing. Like um, when you're losing like that, but hey, um, what good motivation for this year, and just look how you turned it around. So I want to ask you now yeah. that um, we've kind of covered the lows um, of the start of your career. Um, I want to ask Ollie what changed about the team that allowed us to start winning in 2021 this year. I think. Um, like I referred to before, the old bounce of the ball wasn't going our way. And then yeah. in that Hurricanes game, we started getting a roll on and then ended up winning that game by close as well. Bounce of the ball went our way. And then yeah, now that the monkey was off the back in a way, the confidence and the belief and that, like, shit, we can win this. We can't, we can win these games. Yeah. And then so boys started to get happier and it was just like as soon as the monkey was off the back, we got a roll on and momentum and five games in a row. And, made the final, so it's, it was awesome, eh? Like, it was, I don't think anything skill-wise changed or coaching-wise changed. Like, we had a different coach, but it was the same yeah. same systems and same players, but it was the belief and um, 
just finally getting that pressure off us. Yeah, mate. So you're telling me that um, pretty much nothing changed in terms of the way the coaches were helping the team out. Nothing really changed in terms of um, how you were preparing for the matches. It was all just kind of um, a matter of how much confidence the boys had and a matter of you know how much self-belief you guys had and all that. Mm. Yeah, I think it was... Um, like, there's a lot of things that change with coaches. Obviously, you're going to have different style between Gaddy and, yeah, of course. and Donk and Clayton, sorry, I should say. But, um, <laughs> um, but like, the belief and confidence and momentum is just a massive, sh- massive thing. Like, it's, when it's weighing on your back, it's weighing on your back, and, yeah, oh, it's just up, pressure. Straight but, up. no, the boy's loving it. Yeah, awesome, mate. So now I'll ask Ollie, um, kind of a bit more difficult question. So aside from yourself and DMAC, you can't fake yourself. Um, who's been the most influential player for the Chiefs in this season? I would have to say Sam Kane, I think. Like yeah. he, um, a couple of years back, broke his, broke his neck and yeah, nasty. a lot of people thought that'd be the end of him. And it's a pretty major injury to come back from. And then start this year, he's he was playing amazing. And then actually, what, tore his pick and did a few things to his old shoulder. And then in that game, actually kept playing for a bit while he was while he was injured and that just shows how much he's wanting to do which that, that was an injury that had two like a surgery sorry and put him out for six seven months so and to play an extra couple, couple minutes maybe 10 15 minutes on that that's pretty amazing shows how much Chiefs Mana is and oh, how much he respects mate. this man here so it's that's awesome that's mate. Just, it's, it's awesome just seeing just it kind of inspires though. the boy this boys that he's he's turning up every day and still still working hard so he's still like he's still showing up to you know support the boys even when he's got um that torn pick that's just had surgery. Yep. So he's at every game, every training, every meeting. He's there. Fuck. As it must have been. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. Just kind of shows the old uh, the old mental toughness and um you know how much he loves his team and you know how um hard he yeah. works and you know I didn't think he was ever gonna play again after the old broken neck, but he's just so tough, eh? Um, yeah, he's a tough man loves the jersey too yeah it's just great to get the kind of insight from you eh bro so um, now the second to last question I've got for Ollie is um, what was the most important thing that he kind of learned from his first season as a Chiefs and kind of how he brought it into 2021 season um, probably the professionalism like after every training you're stretching you're getting the ice baths you're doing all the stuff to take care of your body you're eating right then before the meetings, you're there 10 minutes early and you see the, the All Blacks sitting in the front row and they're always there early and it just shows how much you have to look after yourself because your body is your, like your worth. Like that's how you earn your money and that's how you do what you love to do. And so I think it's around preparation and just being a professional. Yeah, mate. It's uh, definitely pretty important. So now, uh, big, big question I have for him. Is a pretty important one. So, Ollie, do you think that the Chiefs can win the Super Rugby Trans Tasman Series? What do you reckon, mate? Bloody oath, mate. Yeah, good Wouldn't stuff. be playing if I didn't think I could. <laughs> That's what I like to hear, mate. And we'll start this weekend with the Western Force. It's hopefully if we play our if we play our game right, we do what we can do, and we get this dub, eh? Yeah, that's the stuff. Bloody mate. excited for it. Good stuff. Just yeah, I'll definitely be beating, um, up, beating up some Aussie mates. Definitely be looking at that game and make sure to watch out for this guy because he's going to be making some massive hits, some big carries, and most importantly, he'll be scrummaging hard so the backs can score some main tries. Well, hopefully, get my own try. It's not disallowed this time. <laughs> Better not be disallowed. I'll be finding you, bro. So yeah, that'll be um, the old end of the video. And thank you so much for watching the interview with Ollie Norris from the Chiefs, guys. Um, thanks so much for all the support, and make sure to go down, give us a like and subscribe. Um, give Ollie a follow on Instagram. Um, give myself a follow on Instagram, and I'll chat to you later. Thank you so much. Perfect. Cheers, guys.